Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do some watercolor painting. We are going to just uh, jump right in and do kind of like a shake the rust off type of painting. I'm gonna be using a quill brush and I'm working on Strathmore Wind Power paper. This is actually a discontinued paper and this is the last sheet I have in this pad, so I wanted to use this pad up. And if you're curious, at the end of the video, we can flip through the other, um, the other artworks in this book if you want. Um, also, I'm going to use a water bro an ink filled brush pen at the end for our silhouette shapes. I thought that would be kind of fun. And I was just swatching out the two that I had. One is a Derwent and one is a Pentel. My Pentel is a little darker and also is a little textury and silty and I kind of like that. So I'll probably use that one. But um, you could also use black paint or you can mix the dark with the colors that you'd work into the painting as well. I'm gonna start off by wetting the sky area. And what I've done, this is a six by nine inch piece of paper and I have drawn a horizon line at three inches, so right smack in the middle, which is usually kind of a um, ill-advised for landscapes, but in this case, I think it's gonna work really well. So you can also alter that if you don't like that. So do what you wanna do. So I'm just wetting the sky. And then on my palette, I am going to grab some yellow ochre, really thin it down. You can use Naples yellow if you don't have yellow ochre. And this is uh, my Lucas watercolor palette. You could also use, if you had my signature set, this is the palette from there. You could use um, any of the, the I'd probably use uh, one of the larger larger rounds or the large flat in that, in that set if you're gonna do this, but I really wanted a loose floppy brush, so that's why I am using this uh, Princeton Neptune quill. And uh, I like this a lot. If you're in the if you're in the market for a quill brush and you don't want to have real fur, they're kind of hard to find and they're expensive. But these aren't too bad. This is a number four quill. The sizing is weird on quill brushes. They're way bigger than what you think they're going to be. Like a size four and a regular brush would be. Let's see. I think I have one. I don't know if that's a two. This is a size four regular like Creative Mark Mimic, a regular brush. This is a size four quill. So just to show you the difference. In, uh, in the numbering in those brushes. Now I'm going to grab some, you can go with, uh, so I got these two colors. This one's definitely more of like a rose. This one's definitely more like a crimson. I'm gonna do the crimson, like a permanent alizarin crimson. A traditional crimson is not light fast. Uh, a cr I should, should say, a traditional alizarin crimson is not light fast and it's also kind of like of a bloody, tone to it so it doesn't you don't get this like um really pretty pink undertone that you do when you use a like a modern alizarin crimson or a permanent alizarin crimson this brush holds tons of water so i'm going through and just sopping up the excess with a dry brush i blot it on a paper towel dry it off and uh and get the excess and i'm just kind of blending it into that yellow and the crimson is gonna make it less uh, orangey right there, so we don't have too much, too much of the orange to contend with. And these quill brushes hold so much water that it's easy to dilute your colors. If you have a problem with getting colors that are too strong, you'll get plenty of water in with these. Now I think I'll mix a little bit of the uh, red and yellow ochre together to bring in a little bit more orange on the edge here and on the edge over here where there just wasn't enough pigment to get a nice orange. Let's see, now I'm gonna bring in some blue. I think I'm gonna go with a cyan blue uh, let me think on that for a second. Do I really want that sign? That might turn too green in the sky. Let's see, maybe go to this color here. Hit it in the corners. And then try mixing some of that with your crimson to get the purple, and then I would add the purple in. Make some clouds with that purple. I 
You can also tip your paper around if you want to um, get it to move a little bit more. That's a pretty sky, isn't it? I'm going to put some down here as well. Now this background is still wet, so that's why we're not getting like cauliflowers or anything. That's kind of important. Now if I cover, if I combine too much of the purple and yellow, i got to be careful because they're going to gray each other out. So um, I want to make sure that I'm expecting kind of more gray clouds if I go in over the purple. And if you want to switch to a smaller brush because you're just getting way too much paint, you can do that. I would love to find a nice synthetic uh, quill travel brush because I think I could just do so much on location landscape painting. I mean, I could bring this, but it would be nice if I had like a, like a cap to go over it safely just because of the, uh, I guess I could use a brush roll. Um, I just think you, there would be so much potential there. Oh, I'm really liking this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I am just going to kind of um, sketch in the shoreline here where the, where the water, where the sand is. So the water is kind of lapping up over the sand. I just want to kind of, kind of get that in there. And now I'm going to mix my yellow, my blue, and my red together and make myself just kind of like a uh, gray. And that's what I'm gonna put in down here. And this will be my kind of sandy area. And I'm even going to kind of go in and throw in some shadows where the um, where the waves are going to kind of lap it and have a little bit of shadow next to the foam. I'm doing that with that same gray. Okay, and then another thing I can do, but oh, uh, might, that might need to dry a little bit more, or I might need to go with a smaller brush because I don't want to have so much color. Um, I want to put kind of like some mountains back there or, or a little peninsula. So I'm going to go with, I'll go with this number four so you can see the difference. I'll do the number four. Uh, I'm going to mix up a little bit darker because we are going to be going on to wet paper, so it will dilute out a little bit. And it will it'll um, it'll fade out a little bit too. I don't want that extra water when I go to put it onto the paper. Because if I go in with a wetter brush than what than the water that's already there, it's going to be um, it'll get give me a cauliflower. Like they'll give me a blossom, and I don't want that. Uh, maybe a little bit more red in there. A little bit more yellow. Look at that balance. All right, I'm just gonna put this right on the horizon. I'm gonna start just by drawing a line, and then it's gonna wick up, and then I can add more if I need to. But if I just draw that line and that wicks up enough that it gives me this natural kind of looking island area, then I'll be good. I won't have to do any more. It's really hard to get it to pull back once it start to wick, once it started to wick up into the paper, because if I have to blot, it's going to blot out the other things that I already have there, and I don't want that to happen. So, just go right in with a line along the horizon first, and let it move and see what it does before you go in and add more. Lucas paints are pretty easy to work with. They don't um, they don't run away on you too badly, which is nice. Something else I noticed, I didn't get all the way down. Well, I'm gonna let that dry. If I try to go in and, and fill in that area that I missed, it's just going to um, it's just going to cause me some some problems. So uh, at this point, let's let this dry, and then we're gonna go in and do the water. All right, I did use my heat tool to speed up the process and make sure that it was fully dry. 
And now I'm going to begin working on the water. And in back here, it's very grayed down. So what I'm going to do is actually take a little bit of the uh, of the blue. I did switch to a flat brush, a, a half inch flat, because I figured it would be a little bit... Um, a little bit easier to get the straight horizon line there. Um, so again, I'm using the three colors, but a little bit more of the blue out of the three. So we've got kind of like a cool purpley gray color here. And I'm going to start this in here. And I'm using the chisel edge to keep my edge. This is a Royal Aqualon brush. It's another brush I really like and recommend. And I'm working on dry paper. And also I like using a flat for ocean water because, or even any, any sorts of water really, because when you're applying paint like this with the chisel edge, you can leave little gaps of light showing through and it can give you that appearance of um, light reflecting off the water. Or you can even do this and then go over with a glaze of like yellow or pinks um, and get I like the, the sunlight reflecting, the actual sunset colors reflecting. So I, I like that. Um, and it's just so easy to create when you have a, a flat brush. I try to keep um, the stuff I'm applying like uh, horizontal, like uh, parallel with the horizon line, or maybe just if there's like a one point perspective, a little bit of an angle. I just try to make sure everything agrees with everything else. Now I do have a little bit of a wave coming in here, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of shadow under that. And I will link to my reference photo. It's by Sam Hull on Unsplash. I will, uh, I'll link to that so you can find it and you can see what I am looking at as I'm, as I am painting here. So I know some, I know that's helpful. It's helpful to see that in addition to watching, uh, watching somebody paint. Now I'm going to clean my brush. I only got one uh, thing of water here, by the way. Usually I have two, I recommend two, but I just, I started to film and I realized, oh, I didn't have another jar on my table. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab this crimson, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the, um, the previous mixed gray, and I'm gonna go in and start adding that into my water area underneath, and overlapping a little bit even. Pull some of that color up. Clean my brush. Blot it. I'm going to go for some of the yellow ochre. These are all very subtle, uh, subtle tones that we're working with. Can go up in with some yellow ochre up into the darker areas and get that reflection in the water too. And I can get a little bit of that in the water down here. The end of that wave. A bit over here. Now back in with the pinks because there was more of the pinks. We're using the same three colors. Red, yellow, blue, right? We're using the same three colors, we're just mixing them. Uh, so we got some pinks in here that I'm seeing a lot more of now that I'm looking more Carefully, I'll put the blues in last. Just kind of using the corner of this brush. This does not hold a ton of paint, so it keeps me from getting um, overwhelmed and getting too much. This is a pink, this is wet sand here. The water has kind of made the sand wet enough that it is just kind of reflecting. It's reflecting the sunset, it's reflecting that beautiful sky. And then, lastly, we're going to grab some blue on its own with a nice clean brush. I'm 
And this is going to go over, it's firstly going to go over this wave area, the shadow and the wave. And then we'll get a little bit into the wave itself, just flicking with a corner of that brush. You could use a round brush too, it doesn't have to be a, uh, doesn't have to be a flat. A little bit of that up in here. Got a lot of it down in the foreground. Just kind of uh, tapping and wiggling my brush to get that little bit of a ripply, foamy texture. I don't mind if the white and the yellow and the pink show through and the colors can overlap. We shouldn't get mud because we've got, we've got a lot, uh, we only have three colors that we've been working with, so it shouldn't go muddy on us. Let me throw some in over here too. And I think I will make a little bit of purple. For some of the sky reflections over here. And a little bit in our little white cap area. And also maybe a little bit behind to give a little contrast to that, that wave that's kind of turned over. Now at this point, I'm gonna let the, um, the paper dry. And when we come back, we will see if we need to adjust anything. And if not, we'll go in with our brush pens. But it's really important that if you're going to go in with the brush pens that your papers dry first. Otherwise, you're going to have feathering and it's not going to look so great. I think I'll probably have to darken some stuff up in the water and ground area. But I'm going to let this dry and then make my final decision when I come back. We'll see you in a bit. All right, that layer's all dry. It's actually been a couple hours because um, I had some other work to do. So I'm going to start off by mixing up some of the blue with the yellow ochre that we used. And it's going to make a dulled green. I think I want a little bit stronger than that though. There we go. And that is going to go in this area here where you can kind of see the uh, inside of the wave. You know how the wave kind of swells up and you can kind of see that, uh, that like, uh, kind of lift up of the water and we'll do some of that over here as well. I know it is, we haven't had any green on here yet because we haven't mixed the, we haven't let the yellow and blue mix. So it's going to look a little weird at first. So we're going to have to add that in elsewhere too. It's nice to kind of glaze over your, some of your shadow areas, some of the purples. And I'm using a number six round. I'm going to dab in some little dots. I don't want to spatter on this because I think a spatter would be a little too unwieldy. But I do want to get some of those like bits of a uh, kind of like spatter, you know, some stippling. And I can also add some of this out a little bit further in the water. I'm not putting a lot on there. I just want to kind of integrate it a little bit. I'm going to mix up a little bit more though. And I think some of this would be nice. Oh, I can also put like a little wave kind of. You see some like little uh, white caps that are kind of pronounced. You can actually throw a little bit of that under the white caps and it'll look like you've got some waves coming in. Draw, you can draw the eye through the scene.
And I want a little bit of the blue, a little bit more um, strong and pure in here. I'm probably going to need to blot that a little bit because that is a little strong, but I know I just need something in there, a little bit more blue. There definitely is a kind of a blue tint to the front of the wave that I want to get in there. I'm also going to pick up a little bit of that blue and just kind of go under a little shadow area there. There's a lot of blue in the uh, reflections, so I just want to make sure that I've got enough color in here too. But you got to balance it out because if, but it, this wave has a lot of blue in it. If you look at the reference photo, you'll see what I mean. Um, so you got to kind of balance that out, otherwise you're going to have, uh, it's going to look really out of place to have a bunch of blue there and not have it, uh, not have enough of it in the other spots. I'm going to grab a little bit of the pink. Add that in front this wave too. So pretty. All right, and now I need a little bit more of that kind of like a gray, sandy color. This is the color we're using. Actually, I might just go in with the purple to begin with and see. That might not be too bad, actually. There's also some like um, like distracts and disturbances on the sand. So I'll kind of just tap my brush around, get some stippling, or get some texture in there. Then I'll add a little bit of the yellow ochre to tone it down a bit. I didn't go all the way to the edge in a couple of spaces and I want to make sure I did I do finish that up. All right, now I'm looking at that wave. I still think I need it a little bit darker in value. Should have gotten to that color first. Thought I could sneak it out. I thought I could sneak out a little yellow ochre and not contaminate the pan. A little bit more blue. With a little blue. It's not green enough, but it still needs to be also very neutral. Get too much paint on there. I want to get a little bit of movement. So I'm making sure my strokes are going diagonally. I get that roll of the wave. In there. And bring a little bit of that color in here too where it's a little bit darker. We're doing a lot of glazing, really. We're kind of building up our 
building up our colors and put some footprints. Footprints can go right over the reflection. Take a few laps of the water to completely erase footprints, so it's okay to have a little texture in there. I'm going back into the green with a dirty brush. I still feel like I need a little bit more of that over here, a little bit more dark. Now we don't want it too dark because we are going to be going over with our brush pens in a second. And that's going to, uh, that needs to be darker than all of this. Or you don't have to. If you like it just the way it is and you don't want to add to it, you don't have to. So if you're like, man, that's the best sunset I ever painted, I don't think I want to do anything more to that, Lindsay. You don't have to. I'm not the boss of you. You do what you want to do. I wanted a little more contrast over that uh, wave, so I just brought, brought that color over a little bit more. Alright. At this point, if you want to add any more color, if you want to brighten up any colors, now's the time to do it, because once we add that pen in there, that ink, um, we're going to want to be done. We're not going to want to be fiddling around with this anymore. Okay, so if you think you want something brighter, then you want to do it right now, okay? Or if you want anything, anything darker, you want any of these other colors in there. the time to do that. All right, I'm going to dry this and then when we come back we are going to use our brush pens. I'm going to use my Pentel brush pen. Now you can purchase these with ink in them, uh, then you can always refill them from a bottle of ink. If you're refilling or if you're buying an ink pen, you might want to test to see if it's waterproof if you think you're going to do watercolor over, where it, over it. Um, and what you do is you just put some out, let it dry, and then you take your brush and you would brush over it. Now that one, the Pentel one we're going to use is waterproof. The Derwent one is not. So if I'm going to refill this Pentel ink, I would probably use one of my waterproof black inks. So what I'm going to do is get this started before I get to my painting. It's already going because I had swatched it out earlier. You want to do that um, before you begin. <laughs> you don't want to like be testing it right on your paper. And as you can see, even just doing that, I made a speckle there. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to try to lift it. I will work it in somehow. If it doesn't end up being covered by what I'm doing, then I will, um, then I will turn into a bird or something. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start by putting a tree trunk. And I'm going to go right off the page. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to give me some scale. And if I feel like I need to get it started, what I can do is just kind of squeeze out on my palette. And if I've got some stubborn watercolor underneath, like I can see a line or something, I can just brush over that and, um, and it will kind of reactivate the watercolor underneath and it will, um, it'll just kind of absorb into the, into the tree. That's got quite a curve on it, but I think that's all right. Part of a palm frond we can see there. This is a really nice tip on it. This came in a uh, art subscription box, but you can find these um, where pens are sold, usually in like the drawing or drafting aisle of your art and craft store, or uh, from any online any online retailer. 
Or you can buy a fine tip water brush and put your own ink in it. If you choose an ink that is suitable for fountain pens, it shouldn't clog in your brushes, in your um, in your water brushes, if that's what you're gonna do. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. Make sure your paper's dry. That's the only th that's the only thing I have to um, to really recommend because you don't want to have uh, you don't want to be smearing stuff. So I'm gonna do, let's see, let's pretend there's another palm frond up here. We're gonna just pull, and I'm starting my strokes on the tape. That's another reason I wanted to do the tape there because then I don't have to worry about, um, I don't have to worry about like having ink on my table or having awkward lines where I've started it. It'll look a little messy when we begin, but that doesn't matter because it's gonna look fine when we're done. And then since this guy does not have a, uh, a palm front, I'm just going to give him a couple little birds. Now I might want to go over that with another layer because that ink is a little more transparent than I anticipated, so I'm just going to give it, give it another coat here. I probably shouldn't have done that right over the paper, but I wanted to make sure I had enough in there. because that ink's looking a little dull on my watercolor paper. I haven't really used this brush too much, to be honest. I haven't, I don't think I've used it with watercolor. I hold it at, a, at an angle, at a 90 degree angle, so I can get really good details. So unfortunately, it makes my to be in front of the camera sometimes. My apologies. Um, also going to throw some little bushes, branches, little things growing here off the off the sides. A little plant with little leaves on it. If you have something you don't particularly like about your picture, that's a great spot to put a little bush or a shrub or something. I like to put grasses around the base of trees because generally, you know, they're not getting trampled, so that's when you tend to have, you tend to have a lot of that sort of thing. I love the little, little plants with the little leaves on them. Nothing you fancy, just you can even just do some do some dabs. Making a pretty uh pretty kind of like little frame. And then over here do another uh I'll do another tree, I'll do a deciduous tree. Do another palm tree though if you wanted to. Put some little little lacy branches kind of going all these different ways. Lucky to be living someplace warm where palm, palm trees can uh, can survive. <laughs> we don't have palm trees up here where I'm from. We have trees like this up here. We got these uh, deciduous trees actually right now when it's warm enough for um, when it's warm enough for beach weather, there are tons and tons of leaves on them. Oh, another thing I want to mention, if you haven't used your brush pen in a while, uh, I would recommend that you shake it up because if it's a pigment-based ink, you are gonna have um, you want to shake it up or the ink, the pigment will settle out and you'll end up with a much more transparent. Actually, I'm thinking I might want to cap this up and shake it. I did shake it before I tested it earlier. And then don't open it, don't uncap it right next to your work because you could end up with, um, with major regret. All 
I just want to make sure I've got enough of this tree coming off of the uh, page so this doesn't hang there. I like to have a little bit of a frame. I'll leave a little gap like this little path like someone's walking down the path. They're going to go for a sunset swim. Doesn't that sound nice? This beautiful beach. There, you can add as much or as little as you want. Now we're gonna give this another dry and we can take our tape off and see what we have. Now I might need to go over this with a, um, with a stronger black marker. We will see, because uh, it does look a lot grayer than what I originally saw when I, when I originally sketched that out. It seemed like it was a lot more opaque, but on top of the watercolor, on top of this painting, it doesn't seem to be giving me that opacity, so I might need to go in there with like a, uh, a pit pen or something, a brush pit pen. We will see. And also heating up the tape will help it remove easier. Because sometimes your paper will want to tear and that is such a bummer after you've spent time on a painting. So we'll take our tape off and reveal the magic. Well, it's a very soft pastel look though, especially with like the more of a gray silhouette versus a black silhouette. I think it's kind of nice and soft and really lovely. Uh, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as promised, we can flip through the other pages in this book. I don't think, uh, there's not too many finished works of art in here. I have to say a lot of them are just kind of like uh, examples and experiments, but there's that. Um, I'll post a picture of that on my Instagram and blog in a day or two, so you'll be able to see uh, that all finished if you want to kind of zoom in or anything. And I'll post a link to the reference photo in the, um, and supplies in the video description. So let's see what else is in this book because this is the last page. I always find this so exciting. I love finishing something out. It's finishing something out. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the finished artwork in this pad and just kind of stick it in my finished, stick it on my pile of sketchbooks, or if I'll uh, just pull out the finished artwork. This was from a uh, critique club a couple weeks ago, a month ago or so. What else? And that's when I realized that this pad of paper was discontinued and I was kind of bummed out about this. Oh, this was just me playing with some different, uh, Oh gosh, I can't even read. Oh, texture medium. I was playing with Winsor Newton texture medium and iridescent medium and uh, and just masking fluid, just playing with a bunch of different things there. That was, oh my gosh, 2017. It's been a while since I used this book. Uh, I was just doing a very, um, a very quick paint. Actually, it wasn't going very well. I remember being very upset while I was painting that. I was very frustrated. Um, oh, I was just kind of working out some candies, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what the story of that was, but I was just kind of like, doodling candy, I guess. And I don't know what the heck I was doing there. Probably trying some mixes out or something. Boy, what a waste of paper. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I was just practicing with some brush strokes or maybe I let the kids use this one. I was probably doing a dew drop there. I don't know, guys. I don't know what I was doing <laughs> with this book. Um, I was practicing a few little flowers there. Oh, that was when I was, uh, I was testing out the, I think I was testing out Either the Jane Davenport, no, I was checking, testing, I was thinking, was it the Jane Davenport ones? No, it was the um, Cheap Joe's American Journey watercolor crayons. And I did the Cheap Joe's crayons with that, American Journey watercolor sticks. Yeah, I like that, that was kind of funny. Sometimes I really like the uh, the test pieces I did that's got the swatch and a little smidgen of artwork on the same page. This was, uh, oh, I was testing out the, uh, the pastel Prima palette when I first got it, and I wasn't loving it here, I gotta say. Uh, it grew on me, but I wasn't loving it, and I don't know if I was, I think I was also using that on that one too. This is a hot mess. I, I think I was just playing with, I was just playing with paint. Wow, man, I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm glad I put this at the end of the video. Nobody's probably watching this long. Um, so my macarons, my macarons have come a long way over the years. <laughs> and some other crazy little flowers. And, uh, oh, this was a uh, water-soluble graphite with, I think, either watercolor over it or maybe graphitin over it, but I started with the Lyra water 
water, uh, water soluble graphite stick. I remember what that, that was. And wow, that's a mess. This is a hot mess. I think that, um, that I might just take out this and the button jar and maybe the squirrel and put the rest in the fire pit. I don't know, maybe use the back. I guess I could use the backs for like testing out paints and stuff. But hey, I like the way this came out. I still might go over this with something darker. Um, but for right now, I think it looks decent and I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you enjoyed this, this uh, tutorial. Until next time, happy crafting. Okay, I did want to pop right back in here because I did go over the silhouette areas with a a couple just microns, um, a brush one for most of it. Then I just kind of threw a few grasses in with a fine with a uh, a point uh, like an 08 millimeter tip, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna call that done. So this is actually with the additional layer of ink. I just thought I would show you since I just finished that just right now. I I wanted to do it and see if I didn't mess it up before I, I showed you. So if your ink's not dark enough, you can go over it again with a pen. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's waterproof or not because and these are, but it doesn't matter if it is or not when you're going on top of dry paper and you're not gonna cover it up again. So, um, so have fun with it and that's all. Happy crafting.